Okay, hi guys, welcome to Biology Online with Annie from Feeder. Hi, it's Wells. Welcome back to another lesson, and this time we will be talking about metabolic pathways. Um, so, without further ado, let's get into it. So, a metabolic pathway. Um, I put together this little video. It's basically um, the Ford Fiesta being made in a factory with a lot of robots. Now, and also humans. And you need to think about the robots and the humans as enzymes and your production line moving each car along is like your metabolic pathway. So here you can see the body comes and they do a very specific task. They do it over and over. From there it moves, it goes into a paint job and all these guys do is paint, 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 paint all the time. So just like this would for instance be called the, I mean the painting enzyme um, will only be painting. You're not going to have the welding robot or the welding enzyme doing the welding, uh, doing the painting. Because they are specifically like lock and key, that's where they have to work. Okay? So, and the painting robot will not be able to do its job if the welding robot didn't do its job first to build this whole vehicle. So, if the painting robot breaks down, there's going to be a huge buildup of unpainted car bodies. But if the painting robot, if the welding robot breaks down, there's going to be a huge, um, the painting robot won't have anything to work on. Alright, so we go, again, this is the painting area. Now, we're actually just going to show you quickly, this is called the marriage, and this is where the engine and the body comes together for the first time. And all these robots do. You can see there's the engine, and it lifts it in and screws it on tight. Lifts it and screws it on tight. And here we go. This is the wheel enzyme, or the wheel robot. And all he does is puts on wheels. I'm the left front wheel robot. And eventually, that's how your car is gone. So the cars move on these moving assembly lines. It's called now production. Metabolic pathway is the same thing. We move from the one to the next. So... <coughs> it's a series of steps that works towards a final um, product. Okay, Each step is catalyzed by a different enzyme whose structure is encoded by a specific gene. So if my gene doesn't if my gene is mutated, my enzyme won't work, which means my metabolic pathway won't work. So if my plan is broken for my robot, my robot won't work, and because my robot can't work, I cannot build a whole car. So the pathway comes to a standstill. Do you understand? Okay, so when you have a gene, and in this case, we have, call it enzyme A, and this is our precursor chemical. So this chemical has to be converted into something that is useful at the end. You have enzyme A, the first enzyme, and it's going to transform it into something called an intermediate. Okay, so we basically go from... Uh, basically a bunch of metal parts, turning it into a car body. These were our welding robots. And now we have the plan over here is the plan for the um, painting robots. And the painting robots then take this unpainted car body and turn it into a painted car body. All right. So you can see there's two different enzymes that are at work. If enzyme A doesn't work, enzyme B cannot work because there's not going to be any enzyme of any intermediate chemical. So we have the precursor chemical, the intermediate, and the end product. Okay, so I'll just read this to you. A metabolic pathway is a series of biochemical steps controlled by enzymes. They convert precursor chemicals through a number of intermediate chemicals into an end product, which will have a physiological or phenotypic effect on the organism. As each step is controlled by an enzyme, and each enzyme is a complex protein catalyst, in other words, a catalyst like a chemical catalyst, which has been derived from the genetic code. So my enzymes come from the genetic code. Then changes to the genetic code 
like mutations may affect the metabolic function. I, basically what I just said in the previous slide. Faulty genes at any step of the pathway coding for non-functioning enzymes can lead to a buildup of precursor or intermediate molecules and an absence of end product, both of which may be harmful to the organism. We can inherit these faulty genes which result in inherited metabolic disorders. Examples are things like albinism, cretinism and alka tenuria. I'll show you that later. Okay, so this is phenylalanine. Okay, phenylalanine goes through a metabolic process. It's a metabolism. The essential amino acid phenylalanine is converted into many products via a series of enzyme controlled steps. Um, and the metabolism basically represents a metabolic pathway. So there we go. A protein, the proteins are broken down and they release phenylalanine. These are an essential amino acid. We cannot make it, that's why it's called essential. Okay. It is then converted into something called tyrosine. Tyrosine is then converted into, there is an enzyme, right there by the arrow, tyrosine is converted by enzyme into thyroxine and melanin. So, if you cannot produce melanin, what's going to happen? You will be an albino. So if this enzyme is broken, we will not have melanin, and there will be too much tyrosine. <coughs> can you see where I'm going with this? Tyrosine can also be converted into hydroxyphenolic pyruvic acid. Hydroxyphenol pyruvic acid. You don't have to know any of these names, guys, please. You just need to understand the concept. Another enzyme comes, takes this hydroxyphenol pyruvic acid and converts it into homogentisic acid. And the homogentisic acid is converted into maleo... Oof. Melialacetoacetic acid. I don't know how to pronounce that right. Anyways, and that is eventually converted into carbon dioxide and water. Okay, so can you see if an enzyme is faulty along any of these lines, it will have an effect, and your previous one will build up, and the one that was supposed to come after does not exist. Okay, so there's some errors um, in some of our metabolism. Um, over here is the when we start with the phenylalanine, um, or yeah, the phenylalanine from the protein. It is the protein is broken down by protease, which is an enzyme that goes in there, and then we have phenylalanine hydroxylase, and that actually converts it into tyrosine. But the phenylalanine can also then, with a faulty enzyme, result in the buildup of phenylpyruvic acid. So, if this enzyme is broken, you get a buildup of phenylpyruvic acid. This in turn causes phenylketonuria. Um, phenylketonuria is you have these phenyl ketones in your urine, mental retardation, a mousy body odor, light skin color eczema, excessive muscular tension, and um, excessive muscular activity. <coughs> There's a bunch of enzymes that work between tyrosine and thyroxine, but if any of them are, are a problem, you get something called cretinism or dwarfism. They have mental retardation, like you can see here. Um, low levels of thyroid hormones retarded sexual development and yellow skin color because the thyroxine is not being produced. Over here, tyrosinase is supposed to make our melanin which give us skin color and if that doesn't work we get albinism. Okay, if the enzymes tyro tyrosinase does not work you get albinism and it's a complete lack of the pigment melanin in the body tissue including the skin and the hair. Now, if you look at this person, that is actually an African person. So his mom and dad could be um, black, or one could be al albino, most likely, that they would pass on this gene. And over here you have Caucasian al albinos. Okay, so um, can you see this person is supposed to be black, but they cannot make any melanin. 
Um, again, as we go further on transaminase, that can be a problem. Um, so these metabolic disorders vary in degree of severity. So the further on you are down the line, possibly the less effect it will have. Okay, so here we go to the next steps. Um, if you have a, a your, we were up here, we looked at the hydrophenyl pyruvic acid. So we'll pick it up there again. Hydrophenyl pyruvic acid. The hydroxyphenyl pyruvic acid oxidase turns it into homogenetic acid. But if that guy is broken, or the DNA has mutated, which then causes a faulty enzyme, you get death from liver failure, or if you're surviving chronic liver and kidney disease. If your homogenetic acid oxidase um, turns it into that word, maleolacetoacetic acid, um, and then you get something called alcoptonuria, dark urine, pigmentation of the cartilage, so your ears, look at that, cartilage in your ears and your nose turn blue, and other connective issue, and later in the year you get arthritis. I think this is the one they call, um, so you can see there the blue collagen in their eye color. And last year I had a student who actually had this. Okay, um, here's some more metabolic disorders. Um, most of them can be picked up quite early. Phenylketonuria, um, we talked about that already. Um, the occurrence is 1 in 19,400. Cystic fibrosis is New Zealand's most common life-limiting genetic condition. About 1 in 4,100 babies. So abnormal secretions of um, body fluids. So they have a lot of um, mucus that is produced. Poor growth, chest infections, shortened life. Okay. But again, it is because you have this um, enzyme that doesn't work properly. Okay. Um, galactosemia causes eye cataracts. You can see the cataracts on this baby's eyes. Similar to what you get with diabetes in older years. And also, you get jaundice, which is the yellowing of the skin. One in one... 166,000 babies. They have poor feeding, lack of energy, malnutrition, developmental delay, life-threatening complications. It's maple syrup urine disease. What an interesting term. But that's their urine. Um, galactosemia. Um, the enzymes defect prevent normal use of milk sugar. You get jaundice and cataracts and severe illness. 1 in 67,600 babies. Um, here's some more. You can read all of these, okay? But it's all because of different enzymes having a mutation in the DNA. So, we regulate enzyme production. The cells need to control the rate of and frequency of protein synthesis. These are controlled through transcription. Sometimes genes are induced or turned on and therefore trans transcribed only when an enzyme product is required. So we're not going to make, I don't know, too much testosterone as a child when you're like two years old. Um, you understand what I'm, what I'm getting at there? Um, with an enzyme product is required to catalyze reactions that may inc occur infrequently. For instance, the use of a particular substrate that is not always available. So, your fight and flight. We shouldn't always have those hormones going. Okay. Other constituent genes are being transcribed all the time because their enzyme products are in constant demand. For instance, gene coding for respiratory enzymes. Okay, and we will stop there for a moment. Um, I need you to please get onto the OLE and uh, not the yes, and I will put the the pages of the sidepad in there for you that you need to please go through. Okay.
thank you so much. Um, I hope you have a great day.